One rainy night, the wind was blowing in the window and lanterns were lit around the house. Inside the house, there were two young people in love who showed their feelings for each other. He was dressed in a black jacket and a purple dress. The boy kisses her on the neck and calls her name, her being Stella, but she tells him not to call her name that. He is left stunned and at a loss for words when Stella tells him that she mistakenly thinks she loves him, looking at each other in love. He approaches her and kisses her passionately. She tells him they are not doing this out of love as she has known this for a long time. Stella on a beautiful day sits for tea with her parents and wishes them congratulations as she is now officially engaged to Sir Ethan. She remains in shock about this news. Her parents tell her she is marrying into Elliot's family, thinking it is wonderful, telling her she is bravo. Stella about this situation feels tied by her hands and closed, saying that there is nothing good about this engagement and she wants to cancel it no matter what. She sits at the table fidgeting and says she doesn't want to marry the boy from Elliot's family, as she is under a lot of stress. Her mother tells her not to say this out of the blue that she doesn't want to get married, because Stella has known that boy since they were little. Stella begs them to stop the engagement. She thinks she'll be tortured if she marries Ethan after all. Stella says she'd rather marry Fred, her mother asking if it's about Marquis Lyon's son. Stella thinks Fred would definitely treat her fairly. She would accept a commitment to him. Stella's mother says that unfortunately she hasn't heard anything from the Lyons, but Stella says she's like a little sister to Fred, and in case she marries for sure she won't marry Ethan. Stella is shocked when her parents ask her what went into it, thinking if they refuse, it is not an option for their family. She's curled up on the bed thinking she has to do something and doesn't want to face the same future again. At one point, her door is opened by Ethan Elliot being the eldest son of Marquis Elliot, who comes from a family of wizards. She is very surprised that Ethan has come to her, but in a moment he tells her what he is there for and commands her to come out. She remembers that she has seen this situation before. If she doesn't resist, he will have his way with her. Ethan stands with his back to her and tells her that it's been a while since they last met. He notices that she's a little sad and asks if she's been crying because she's happy to be engaged to him. She gives him his hand off to the side and tells him not to touch her. He asks her what she thinks he's doing, but she doesn't answer anything. Ethan grabs her hands so she can't do anything and puts her to bed, and he tells her that she is already his and to know it. But she tells him that she never agreed to it. Their parents arranged this marriage, and Ethan tells her that her feelings now don't matter, but she screams for him to stop. He grabs her and asks her if she's okay since they're engaged, but she wants to get out of his hands anyway and struggles to escape. He asks her what she thinks he's doing, but she tells him if he won't leave, she'll ask for help. Stella was very angry, but Ethan can't believe he hit her. She screams for help, but he hits her across the face and tells her he won't let her say no once they are married. But she died once before. Ethan and she were in the kingdom dressed up and eventually married into the Elliot family as Ethan's wife. And she was forced to be an exit for Ethan's indecent desires. Her mother-in-law bullied her every day and wouldn't allow her to make so much as a pass outside the manor, it took everything she had just to get through each day. She was kept in a cell tied with a rope by her hands. Years passed and she failed to get pregnant, so Ethan and his mother decided she was useless and locked her in the underground cellar. She died there alone. But somehow she was able to open her eyes and wakes up in a bed she had returned the day before her marriage to Ethan was announced. In this case, she is thinking of eloping. In her early life, she always regretted not running away when she had the chance. She decides to write a letter. There, she apologizes to her parents that she is sorry for how selfish she was. At that moment, her parents are knocking on her door. Her father wonders what she is thinking refusing a proposal from the son of a marquis. In the letter, she also says that she will decide her fate for herself and says she will not return home. This will be her last selfish act. In that act, she also tells her parents to think of her as the mill and not try to look for her. She is leaving to be free. She goes to a horse in the middle of the night and puts a lamp on it that will protect it from magical beasts. She tells the horse not to worry because it will last all night. Stella gets on her horse and wants to leave and in her mind says goodbye to her parents, riding off into a forest that seemed very dark and haunted. She arrives with her horse at a lake, 
where the horse is drinking water while she thinks she is close to the border and should be able to hide from anyone following her now that she has come so far, she wants to go into town first and find an inn. The horse starts to be scared. She didn't understand what was going on, but out of the forest came a beast with crystalline eyes. Stella remains in shock and wonders if it is a magical beast. She wonders if it has come this far what she should do now. The magical beast tries to attack her, but a man dressed in black appears and stabs her to death. She thanks him for it. The black-haired boy dressed in black asks her what she's doing in a place like this. He approaches her horse and says it's a good horse that should be able to hold two riders. He gets on his horse and tells Stella that she has to hurry up and run away. As they are walking, she asks him where she is going, but he says she is heading to his mansion and to stay relaxed. He uses his magic by mistake when he cupped Stella. She sees and asks him if something is wrong, but he says it's nothing. He wonders what that was and what this sensation could be if he feels hot. They arrive at the boy's mansion. Stella is impressed and says it's a lovely mansion. The boy decides to ask her what her name is. She tells him her name is Stella and thanks him very much for saving her. The boy tells her that by her appearance, he can only assume she comes from a wealthy family that he wouldn't like to offend, so he asks her to tell him her last name, but she says she doesn't have a last name anymore as she ran away from home. She strokes the horse and looks at the boy and tells him that she has been riding all night and asks him if her horse could rest in his stables. Stella had a wound, and he asks permission to bandage that wound because her arm was hurt. They are sitting at the table over a cup of tea, and he asks her if she ran away because she didn't want to get married. He thinks he saved her and finds this unbelievable. She apologizes and asks the boy what his name is. He thinks and says his name is Lucas Bloodrare, almost dropping the cup of tea down. She is surprised with a cup of tea in her hand and asks him if Bloodrare is the famous family of wizards and why he lives alone in a place like that. Lucas enjoys his tea and tells Stella, he tells her that he has his own positions and that he left home a few years ago and now lives in that mansion that was once used by his ancestors. Stella looks at him and asks him why he didn't defeat that beast sooner. He looks at her very intently without taking his eyes off her, but she asks him if all blood rare men can use dark magic, but he says unfortunately he can't use magic. Normally magical energy can be recovered naturally through food and sleep, but he was born with the inability to regenerate his magical energy. He has tried many methods, but has found nothing that works. Stella looks at him and thinks that if he really can't regenerate his magical energy, but this reminds her that before he died, she heard that the Blood Rare family met their doom when the Earl's heir couldn't use magic, thinking the same thing would happen again, but he tells her that when he touched earlier, he felt a small part of his magical energy was restored but she didn't understand what it was all about. Lucas gets up and grabs Stella's hand. She knew about the magic and felt it, and his body glowed. He tells her that she really is the key to restoring his magical energy. He asks her if she could stay there for a while and asks her to let him touch her. He looks at her holding her hand and tells her he was taking care of all her basic needs. If she agrees to help him find a way to rejuvenate his magical energy, he wants to compensate her financially for that too, and asks her how a hundred million guards sounds to her. Stella was a little scared and pulls her hand out of Lucas's hand and asks him to wait and tells him that she can't allow a man she is not married to touch her so freely. In which case, Lucas tells her to marry him, even if only for a short time he promises not to cross her boundaries. She is surprised and thinks that if he really wants to get married now, because he must be desperate to restore his own magical energy, Lucas looks at her and tells her that a year should be long enough and he will use that time to find a way to restore his magical energy. Of course, he says he would treat his wife well during that time, as long as it allows him to touch her a few hours a day. He can spend the rest of the time as he pleases. She didn't understand what he was talking about and looked at him and analyzed that the proposed conditions weren't so bad because she could earn her protection and freedom and hide from Ethan and get the money she would need to live comfortably in a foreign country. But it didn't really bother her when Lucas touched her. Stella tells him that she will cooperate with him but will leave the moment he does something she doesn't like. She decides to tell him that just in case, 
it would be possible to draw up a contract with the terms they just discussed, and she is wary of relying on verbal promises alone, he understands that she has a point and says she will draw up a Libyan contract. She was sitting and thinking that this contract can't be broken no matter what, and he has to be completely serious about it, and she tells him that this would be a relief, and thanks him. But he tells her not to say thanks, and that he promised to cherish her and treat her well for the next year. Outside it was night. About 24 hours after Stella's disappearance, Ethan was very angry and grabbed Count Norris by the throat and asked him if Stella had not yet returned and aid of Ethan's told him to stop, and that Count Norris was worried about Stella too, but Ethan said that the search for Stella should be a priority. Ethan was very hot and bothered and says in his mind that Stella shouldn't think about getting rid of him. Lucas and Stella were having lunch. She was thinking that even though there are only a few servants here, the manor doesn't seem to lack anything, so he is a rogue wizard. Lucas was enjoying the food, but she still thought that even though she held the key for him to learn how to restore his magical energy. While they were eating lunch, a girl calls out to him, but he tells her that he can't just barge in. The girl who came over tells him that she baked a delicious pie and would rather eat it together. The girl in the pink dress shouts at Lucas and asks him who the woman he was dining with is, but he tells her she is his fiance and that he will marry her and says he cannot accept her feelings. Stella looks at her and wonders if things are going to get ugly. The girl in the pink dress tells Lucas that she has never mentioned Stella before and asks him what family she belongs to and why they met there, but he tells her it is none of her business. That girl was very angry and agitated and says Stella and Lucas's marriage will never work, and that girl is screaming that Lucas is impotent. Lucas pours a glass of champagne and says that his body doesn't react no matter what woman he is with. The girl in pink tells Stella that he still has a chance, but he will definitely never react to her. Stella could see that the girl loved Lucas, but he was annoyed that he had to deal with her, in other words, their contractual marriage was also a way to drive the girl away. The girl was very desperate and was gritting her teeth, but Stella asks her if she really impotent, she said, and that this kind of thing doesn't bother her at all, and Stella asks her to leave. That girl tells her that she will definitely regret this. Stella notices that she went in and out like a storm. Stella tells him to explain what was with this racket, but he tells her that girl was Rosa Diaz. Rosa Diaz is the only daughter of Count Diaz, the sorcerer who rules over the area. Lucas says he doesn't want to mess with her, but because of her social status, he couldn't ignore her. Stella, as she ate, was thinking that he is impotent on top of having no magical powers, and that the blood-rare family might be destined to fall. But if he is truly impotent, she needn't worry that he is attacking her, and that it is actually a relief. It was already evening and Lucas hands Stella the contract and tells her it is a Libyan contract with the information they discussed this morning. But he says he added one last thing and she asks him what he added. He due to compulsive magic will get an electric shock if he abuses Stella. Stella was kind of sad and thought he never told her to go that far, but she understood and agreed to the contract after she finished signing Lucas thanks her. She offers him the contract back and asks him if the contract is now sealed. He tells her that is correct and tells her that now to get started, he asks her to sit next to him. Lucas touches her hand and tells her that he feels nothing when she is simply close to him. She analyzes him and notices that he has big hands and long fingers. Lucas tells her that when he holds her hand, he feels a small part of his magical energy recovering. As they hold hands, she looks at him and asks him if he really never succeeded in restoring magic, but Lucas says he didn't, because he used up all his magical energy at the age of three, and that he tried every possible method, but none of them worked. Lucas is still holding her hand and asks Stella how she feels, but she says she feels nothing. She notices that his body really does seem to glow when they hold hands, but why is he able to rejuvenate his magic when he touches her? She wondered, but also wondered how long he would have to do that. He kisses Stella's hand and asks her if she felt anything, but she didn't. He tells her that her hand was getting warm. She could feel his breath on her skin and tells Lucas not to talk with his mouth so close to her hand. Lucas bites Stella's finger. She angrily asks him what he's doing, but he apologizes for not thinking. 
She's wondering what kind of person he is that he doesn't stop to think before biting someone else's finger and tells him that enough for today. He was electrocuted. Stella didn't understand what was going on and apologizes and wonders if he was electrocuted because she said that was enough and understands how the Libyan contract works and was asking him if he was okay. She looks desperate and tells him if he'll excuse her that she'd like to rest and Lucas tells her it's okay and they'll meet tomorrow saying goodnight. As she walked to her bedroom, she wondered if they would do it again tomorrow and if they would do it every day. Lucas stood leaning against the door and said he could use magic. But how was that possible? He wondered why he felt his power recover more when he kissed his hand than when he simply held it and wondered why the magic felt even stronger than last time. As he stood leaning against the door, he wondered what was wrong with Stella and thought he wasn't impotent. While Stella was asleep, she dreamt of a beautiful forest that was glowing brightly. She asked what it was about that place and said it was beautiful, but she felt a bit nostalgic after this. She woke up and said it was a strange dream. She comes out of the bedroom and the maid says good morning and asks her if she would like some breakfast. She liked that the maid addressed her as her lady, but to her it still didn't seem real. A servant comes to her with a dress and tells her that it is a gift from the master. He tells her that he will take the dress to her room and asks her to wear it later. For Stella, it was a beautiful dress. She asks the servant if Lucas is still sleeping, but he tells her that Lucas has already gone to the forest to chop wood for today. She wonders if he really went to chop wood. She got on her horse and went into the woods after Lucas. She arrives at his place, but he was naked, and tells her that he heard he is in the woods, so she came to see how he is doing. She was wondering if she really should take her clothes off. As she sits on her horse, she asks him why he is chopping wood when he can command someone else to do it. But he says he is doing it to regain his magic, but Stella says his physical strength is having an effect on his magic. Plus, Lucas asks her if it isn't more beneficial to have a large amount of firewood. Stella tells him that maybe it's true that she'll be able to regain her magic that way, but she's actually developed muscle without developing magic. But he tells her that she definitely doesn't sugarcoat anything. She laughs and tells him that she didn't need magic to ward off a magical beast and thinks it's amazing. She thinks she should train herself. Stella wants to chop wood. She even prepares the wood for chopping, and Lucas tells her that it is very dangerous and that she probably can't even pick up the axe with those thin arms, but she believes in her powers. She tries to pick the axe up, but can't. She says it's so heavy thinking the axe is too heavy. Lucas comes over to her and grabs her and helps her pick up the axe, and they broke a wood in two. She tells him to give her some space, but he says she's embarrassed now, even though she wasn't phased to see him without his shirt. He embraces Stella and says he's used to it. Stella thinks she can't tell him she had a husband in her previous life. In any case, they're done splitting wood. As he stays contained with Stella, he feels his magic being restored and asks her to stay contained a little longer. But she wonders how much longer. He tells her that she might encounter a magical beast again, and that it wouldn't be better for him to have some of his magic back if something were to happen. Stella was sitting and thinking when he said that he has no choice but to go along with the idea. After all, she tends to date magical beasts more than the average person. He thought about it tonight too, but her hands are small and that every part of her is thin, and he asks her if she restricts her diet. As they sit huddled, Lucas asks her if this is the dress she gave him, but she says she actually came to thank him for it. She had nothing to change into, so she appreciates it and thanks him very much. He tells her he had a few dresses delivered in a hurry, but they want to go to the tailor to make Eva to fit her tomorrow. He doesn't stop taking his hands off Stella, and she tells him there is no need to go that far because it is not a husband's duty to buy dresses for his wife. She wonders what he is doing, but he actually tickles her and tells her to stop, and he apologizes. Lucas started to load the wood on his horse. Stella thought he just touched it to restore his magic. She was the only one whose heart was beating fast. She asks him if any of his magic has returned with what he did, but he tells her just a little, and he shows her how much magic he has. She is shocked when she sees Lucas's magical energy. He tells her that was all the magic that was restored just now, but Stella didn't understand what was going on and thought she had gone through something so terrible for that. But he tells her that so far, nothing they have done has been able to restore it. So for him, even that much magic is a big breakthrough. 
He's carrying wood and tells Stella he wants to hurry up and figure out why her touch allows him to restore his magic so he can find a way to restore it himself. But Stella thinks that's all he can think about. Lucas strokes the horse after they have loaded all the wood and sees that everything is ready and tells them to go back to the manor, at which point his brother Rosa is hiding in the woods and uses his magic to try to kill Stella. He was very frightened when he sees Stella falling down covered in blood, picking her up and shouting at her. Rosa was sitting on the bed talking to her brother Miguel and telling him what a great job he did. She knew her adorable little brother could do it. She felt great to see him use his magic to hit Stella with that rock. Miguel looked a little sad, but Rosa tells him she wishes he had punched her right in the face. But Miguel apologizes, but Rosa tells him she put frog poison on that rock, but he didn't know about it. The Tepus frogs have a fast-acting poison that is difficult to recognize in the early stages. By the time the wound starts to blacken, it is already too late the patient will start to rot and die. Miguel looks stunned when Rosa says that Stella should hurry up and die, and that Lucas has her after all. She tells Miguel that he is her accomplice now, but he asks her if she won't betray him. He yells and tells her she won't be able to. She says her stomach is starting to hurt and asks him to call all the doctors in the area to see her. Stella was put to bed and bandaged on her head. Lucas asked if any of the doctors could come. Lucas's servant told him that Miss Rosa was complaining of stomach pains, so Count Diaz gathered all the nearby doctors to his mansion. Lucas goes back to his servant and asks him if even one of them can't come, but Lord Diaz has put his foot down and said he can't spare anyone and has sent someone to call a doctor further away, but he won't be here until the afternoon. Lucas says Lord Diaz is doing this because he hates Lucas. As Lucas is sitting next to Stella at one point, she opens her eyes and tells him not to get so upset. She just got a rock in the head. He is stunned when he sees Stella talking and she apologizes for all the worry she has caused, but she didn't want to cause a commotion and says she is fine but Lucas says she is not fine because her face was hurt. Lucas seems a little upset, and Stella asks him if he doesn't want a scarred wife, and that at least it's not in an obvious place. Towards evening, the servant gives a letter to Lucas. That letter was from Mrs. Rosa. In the letter, Rosa writes that Lucas is her darling, and she is sorry that she gathered all the doctors, but they could not treat her illness, and she would feel better if Lucas would go to visit her. Lucas looks annoyed after reading that letter and says it's a joke. He felt the magic of the wind when the stone came flying because the Diaz family men use wind techniques. Lucas was 99% sure Rosa's brother plotted with her and that he does whatever Rosa tells him. He was sitting hunched over the table and says he had a feeling Rosa considered Stella her enemy when she came to the mansion yesterday but he couldn't believe she was smart enough to fake an illness so she could round up all the doctors in the area. Lucas seemed surprised at what the servant was telling him. He was telling him that he was getting too emotional just because Lady Stella was hurt, but Lucas tells him to know that he married Stella because his magic rejuvenates when he touches her. The servant didn't understand how this could be. Lucas tells her he doesn't know how it works yet, but to him, she is someone he definitely can't lose. The servant bows to Lucas, but Lucas tells him not to share this information with anyone, but the servant asks if that means he doesn't love her. Lucas tells him between them it's just a contractual marriage. Hank, that is. The servant sat and looked at Lucas and thought he had a headache when he heard Lucas was marrying a girl with a dubious past, but he wouldn't need her anymore once he figured out how to renew his magic. Once they divorce, Lucas can remarry a woman that suits him best, but the current marriage has to bring his magic back. Lucas is thinking, and the servant tells him that he should try to negotiate with Count Diaz again, but Lucas will go to Count Diaz himself. The maid opens the door while the two are talking and says that Mrs. Stella's condition is a bit bad. Lucas reaches her and pulls the bandage aside and sees that the wound is blackening, and Lucas understands that she has been poisoned with poison from the spiked frog by yelling at the maid. But the maid tells him that the moment the wound starts to change color, something is already wrong. Lucas angrily shouts at the maids and asks them if the doctor they called is still not there. Lucas couldn't believe Rosa had gone this far and shouts at his servant to check the storeroom for medicine. In the warehouse, the servant finds a green bottle and had to hurry for Lucasa to get her magic back. The servant reaches Lucas and shows him what he found. Lucas takes that bottle and gives it to Stella to drink. He tells the servants to leave the room. 
Lucas was standing over her and thinking he couldn't lose her just then, and he decides to kiss her. As he kissed her passionately, the servant stood and watched through the door. He just wanted to help her take the medicine, but he felt his body hot even at a time like this. He wished he could touch her more. He thought with so much magic, he should be able to save Stella. He puts his hand on her forehead and uses the magic he had. At one point, she opens her eyes and he asks her how she is feeling, but she tells him she feels better and didn't understand how she felt that way. He tells her he gave her oral medication and she has recovered more magic than ever before. Lucas sat in thought and told her that her life was in danger because the rock she was hit with had been laced with fast-acting poison. Stella seemed happy and tells Lucas that she doesn't hate him for saving and most importantly decides to thank him in this way. She didn't know that dark magic can heal wounds. To her, this sounds like something only a wise man she read about in a novel could do. She asks him if he has ever heard of the man who could use all kinds of magic, even healing magic. Lucas is sure that this is a fairy tale. As they are talking, the servant opens the door and tells Lucas that his magic is really back. Lucas orders the servant to tell everyone in the mansion to keep the secret that he has healed Stella. Miguel was running with a medicine in his hand. In his mind, he was apologizing to Rosa and that he needs to deliver that medicine right away he hopes to make it on time. While running, he meets Lucas and Stella. But Lucas asks him what he is doing there, and Stella asks him who he is, but Lucas tells her that he is Rosa's younger brother. Miguel shouts that he has brought Stella an antidote. She thanks him and tells him that as far as she can see, she is fine, and luckily they had an antidote in the mansion. The boy Miguel gets down on his knees in front of Stella and says he was worried she would die because of him. He sincerely apologizes and that he didn't know about the poison. Lucas was sitting next to Stella and says he knew Rosa was behind this murder. Lucas thinks from the way Miguel was acting. It seems he didn't know Rosa was using him to do her dirty work. Lucas couldn't blame him for this is Rosa's mistake. Stella sat and thought that she may have thought she planned to make her younger brother take the blame for Rosie's crimes to keep her own hands clean. Stella didn't want to argue with her, but if she were to hurt and endure, Rosa would never stop. This is a lesson for Stella that she learned in her previous life. As Miguel sat in front of them on his knees, Stella says they would both love it. As Stella and Lucas were on their horses and out the gate, the servant apologizes and tells them he has prepared the carriage, but they say it will take too long. The servant thought these two are similar in the strangest ways. They arrived in town, and there was Ethan looking for Stella. She is amazed by the town of Lepia and says it is beautiful. Lucas tells the boy who was holding his horse that Rosa's family mansion is north of here. While they were looking at him, a boy calls him and says thanks for yesterday, but Lucas tells him it's no problem and to let him know if he needs anything else. She tells Lucas that he's very popular, but Lucas thought his magic might be revived if he did good deeds, so he sometimes helps out around town. At one point, a little girl approaches Lucas and offers him a flower. He takes it and thanks her and says it is a beautiful flower. Stella looked at him and thought he was the unsociable type when he thought he could smile like that. She thought he wanted to kiss her, but got annoyed and said she didn't have to think about it. She is surprised to see some jewels, but Lucas tells her that he thought she was going to see Rosa, but Stella has never been there, so she wants to look around. A lady asks Lucas if Stella is his girlfriend, but he says she is really his wife. That lady was very nervous when she heard that Stella was his wife. Lucas tells her he is in a hurry, but Stella wanted to look around some more. At the Diaz mansion, Rosa is sitting complaining that she fell asleep and sees a letter on the table and notices that it is from Lucas. She reads it and learns that Stella has died, but she didn't actually die. Rosa notices someone dark at the window and calls out to see who it is. That was Stella and asks Rosa how she is and Stella also tells her that the poison worked and that it burned her face and that she was in a lot of pain. But Rosa tells her that she is actually dead. Rosa was sitting down scared and Stella was telling her that she couldn't cross over without taking revenge first. Rosa didn't understand what was going on and how Stella got to the mansion. Stella points her sword at Rosa and she screams not to kill her. But Stella says it is very shameful of Rosa to beg for her life when she had the nerve to try to take someone else's life. At one point, Lucas opens the door and Rosa was on her knees. 
and she asks Lucas for help and says that Stella wants to kill her. But he says that she is the one who tried to kill Stella first and will never forgive her for what she did. But Rosa tells him that she loves him very much. Rosa cries and asks Lucas if he loves her too, but holds back because she knows her father won't approve of their marriage. But Lucas tells her he has never loved her and could never love a woman who was glad to hear someone died. Lucas and Stella sit huddled together, and Lucas tells Rosa never to come near them again. The two were sitting huddled together, and Lucas was receiving magic. At one point, Rosa's father opens the door with him was Miguel, and Rosa tells him that he betrayed her. Her father slaps her across the face and tells her what he thought Miguel was his precious heir for, yet almost turned him into a murderer. Blood Rare told her about how Rosa faked her illness to call all the doctors to the mansion. Their family would be ruined if the Blood Rares sued them, but thankfully they agreed not to sue, but now they are deeply indebted to them. Rosa's father turns his back on her and tells her he can't stay there anymore and will marry her off to Baron Tingel. But Rosa says she lives so far away in the countryside and can't stand it. Rosa stands in front of Miguel and begs him to save her, but he says goodbye and leaves. Lucas and Stella arrive at an inn and it is raining outside. Lucas says he would like two rooms, but the woman at the reception says she is very sorry. But many people are staying there because of the heavy storm, and they only have one room available. Lucas says they will go to another inn then. The woman at the front desk yells at him and tells him that his wife will be anxious to stay there alone and asks him why he doesn't stay with her in the same room. Lucas understands this to be true. He sits and thinks that she has a point. She would feel a little uneasy if Lucas went elsewhere, and it's actually not uncommon for married couples to share a room. Stella tells the woman at the front desk that they are going to take that room. Lucas asks her if she really agrees to share the room, but she asks him why he wouldn't want to share it. She tells him that the other inns might have been full, and they are lucky that this room was available. She gets her hands on her sword, but Lucas asks her what she's going to do with the toy sword they bought at the camp down the street. But Stella tells him that she's already used that toy to threaten Rosa and is very terrified. Stella wanted to dry her clothes and asks Lucas if she can use her magic. Lucas says she can but has no magic to use, but she then tells him to redo some of it with the most effective method. Lucas embarrassedly says he wants a kiss to get his magic back, Stella is surprised by this proposal and is wondering if she should do this again with him. Stella tells him if they stay in wet clothes, they will both get cold and won't be able to go to dinner until they dry off. He looks at her and wonders if he really can kiss her. But if she said she can, so he's sure it's okay. He has no reason to refuse Stella when she tries to help him get his magic back. Lucas starts kissing her and Stella feels her heart beating really hard. She feels like Lucar might hear her kicking her so hard it hurts, but for her, it's not an unpleasant sensation. But for Lucas, it's bad, because her wet clothes make her look even more tempting than usual. He knows he shouldn't go any further, but he can't control himself. He holds her as he kisses her, but Stella feels very hot, wondering if kissing always felt so good. After they kiss, Lucas tells her to stay there so he can dry her clothes. In the meantime, he slaps himself across the face and ponders what to do if Stella is married to him just due to their contract. Stella was thinking and feeling that the kiss she had just shared with Lucas was amazing, and she actually felt good. Dark magic is very convenient it can be used in so many ways. They decide to leave for dinner after their clothes are dry. Lucas asks her if she's sure she doesn't mind eating there, but she's actually always wanted to go to a place like that. After dinner, they decide to go to bed, but they didn't know how they were going to sleep. Lucas was going to sleep on the floor, but he says there is only one bed and he can't be helped. Stella tells him she won't be able to sleep if she feels sorry for him, and Lucas tells her they are married, so there shouldn't be a problem with sharing a bed. Lucas is sitting on the floor and asks her if she has any idea what he is saying. She thinks Lucas is impotent, so he should be safe. He tells her he is fine on the floor and not to worry about him and to go to bed. Stella decides to sleep with him on the floor, but after 30 minutes, they decide to go to bed, but they lay with their backs to each other. She thinks it fits better than expected. Lucas's back is warm against her. Lucas begs her not to push him or he will fall. But she was also close to falling, 
and Lucas manages to catch her to help her from falling and asks her if everything is okay. But Stella thanks him. He starts touching her again and tells her it's not what he thinks. She looks at him seriously and asks him if he's impotent. He begs her to believe him when he tells her that he hasn't tried to trick her. He's never even reacted to anyone before. Stella looks at him and asks him if she's his first, but that made Stella's heart beat even faster. He tells her he's going to go sleep on the floor and she's going to stay on the bed to sleep. She thinks he's not even forcing her in that state and he's nothing like any other man she knows. She thought she thought Lucas was cute, being very embarrassed and impatient. A boy was looking out of the window, thinking it was a terrible storm, and hoping that his master and mistress would be all right, at which point someone knocked on his door and asked who he was. Ethan shows him a picture of Stella, and that boy says he thinks she looks like the lady he met earlier. Ethan grabs that boy by the throat and nervously asks him where she is now, but he didn't know, but thinks she lives at the mansion in the woods. Outside, it's raining, and Ethan gives that picture to another boy and asks him if he knows that woman. Actually, Ethan has arrived at that mansion, but the boy says he doesn't know her. But Ethan tells him that someone in the next town said she lives there, but the boy says maybe they were wrong. Ethan hits that boy and asks him if he really doesn't know anything and not to try to hide it. That boy tells him he really doesn't know it, but Ethan decides to go take a look inside. He goes and climbs the stairs. He opens a door and bumps into a girl and thinks it's the wrong person. Lucas dreamt of a forest while he slept. He didn't recognize the place, but it looked familiar. He was sitting on the floor, and Stella was trying to wake him up. She asks him if there is a problem, but he says good morning and that everything is fine. He had messy hair, and Stella started to laugh, but he tells her not to laugh. When the two arrive at the manor, Lucas helps Stella off the horse, but the maid starts shouting at them and calls them to have a word inside. The servant was injured. Lucas wondered what the hell happened, but the servant tells him that last night, a man broke into the mansion and tells him that he was looking for Stella and someone in town told him he saw her. Stella hearing this didn't know what was going on. Stella and Lucas were holding hands with the servant and the servant tells them that Lee was being clever and pretending to be Lady Stella. So Ethan left, assuming he saw the wrong person. Lucas sits the servant on the chair and asks him what the person looked like, and he says he was tall and muscular. He was wearing a hood, so he couldn't see his face clearly, but he thinks he had gray or silver hair. Stella says he might have been her fiancé. She was saddened and apologizes that it is all her fault, but the servant says that for God's sake I cannot allow that man to take her. Stella looks at the servant and remembers Ethan hasn't given up on her yet. If he finds her, she'll be forced to go back to that hellhole. Lucas grabs her hand and tells her not to worry. As long as they are married, he will protect her, and tells her to talk about it later and she better get some rest. Stella looks at Lee and thanks her, and Lee tells her that it was her pleasure to help her, and Stella thinks that Lee's quick thinking really saved her. At that time, Lee asks Stella if she would like a bath and that it would be a great way to relax. Lucas goes up to Hank and thanks him for keeping Stella's secret, but Hank tells him there's no need to thank him. Lucas was thinking he had to hurry up and move somewhere else for Stella's sake. Stella was taking a bath and felt sorry for Hanj and the others, but it's a good thing for her that she stayed in town last night. She never imagined Ethan would follow her so far. She remembers how she was bound and held in a cell and thinks she wants to hurry up and run away and that she never wants to experience that future again but she couldn't break her contract with Lucas because he treats her so well after all. Stella thought Lucas was a good man, but once he learned to rejuvenate his magic on his own, he would be a good heir. If she still had the chance, she would want to change Lucas's future. Lucas walks into the bathroom over her. Stella wonders why he is there. Lucas asks her if she is okay. She says she is sorry she was so surprised she fell asleep. He gets in the tub with her and grabs her, but he tells her it's not what he thinks and that he was just trying to save her, but she says it's okay and she'll get out. Stella was sitting on top of Lucas in the tub and they were looking at each other. Lucas's hard member was touching Stella. She was so embarrassed that she felt like her head was going to explode. She looks at him very embarrassed. Her body feels like it's floating, like she's lost all control of him, and Lucas tells her to stop pressing him and that it's making him angry. Stella was already in bed, and the maid bends down in front of her and apologizes that she thought Lord Lucas was planning to go into the bathroom because he knew she was there. 
but Lucas tells her that he didn't know Stella was there because no one stopped him thinking the bathroom was empty. She looks at him in amazement and thinks that because of this incident, she fainted from the heat in the tub and the heat running down her face. But they didn't want that to happen, so she has no choice but to forgive Lucas. He was no longer impotent at all, thinking he was only reacting to her. Lucas thinks he thought she was going to be upset, but luckily she forgave him, at which time Hank calls Lucas out and tells him he is terrible and gives him a letter. That letter was from Lucas's father. Stella forgets while reading Lucas the letter and wonders if it is from Count Bloodrare. Lucas apologizes and tells Stella that apparently his family found out about their marriage from the people in town. His father asks to meet Stella. She is still sitting in bed, and Lucas tells her he is not a fan of the idea, but it would be a good chance to get out of there and asks her to go to his father's mansion. However, he will introduce her to them as his wife. Stella sat and thought if his parents found out their marriage was by contract, they could force them to separate immediately. Then Lucas would be in trouble, and Stella would not get her compensation. They could divorce in a year, but a contract is still a contract. She thought she had to play the role of Lucas's wife well. She understands and tells him she wants to go to Lucas's parents' mansion. Lucas remembers when he was a child. His parents used to tell him it was amazing that he could use all his magical attributes. His mother used to tell him he was like the wise man in that old fairy tale. His mother gave him a book and told him to make sure he practiced a lot, and when he turned 10, they would present it to the king. His father yelled at him and wondered why he couldn't use his magic anymore, and his father felt no magical power in him and wondered why his magic wasn't being sent away, thinking there was a way to heal him. Lucas looks at that book and doesn't understand anything. His father tells him that he is not a wise man and that he is just incompetent. Lucas and Stella are traipsing through the woods. She asks him what he's doing, and he tells her he's making a portion of a secret magic plant that will allow Stella to change her appearance, but it only lasts half a day, so she'll have to drink it every day. Her ex-fiancé seems to be looking for her, so she doesn't want anyone else to see it. He tells her that just to be safe, he should drink it before seeing his parents, but she feels sorry for not being so careless in Lepia, but Lucas says he wasn't careful enough. As Lucas puts the portion spoon in the water glass, he tells her that he wants to know beforehand that he doesn't get along with his father, because his father had high expectations of him back when he could use magic, so he's extremely disappointed now that he can't do anything, he treats him harshly because of it. Lucas stirs the magic drink and tells Stella that up until now, no matter what he did, he never imagined she would call him home because she was getting married. Stella tells him she might succeed, but maybe she didn't like him getting married without permission. He reviews the drink and at the same time tells Stella that his father has told him he will not think of him as his son. He thinks this means he can make his own choices about marriage. The drink was ready and tells Stella to try it. They arrived at his father's mansion, sat at the table and had a cup of tea. Lucas's mother says welcome home and Stella says she is pleased to meet you. Lucas's mother says she is nice and asks where they met. Lucas's father looks at them and says it's important already that Lucas can use his magic. Stella in her mind says, so this is Count Bloodrare. Lucas tells his father he can't use magic yet. Dad stands with his hand on his knuckles and asks Lucas if he had time to get married, even though he's still in his incompetent body. Stella hearing this thinks it's awful, and it's almost as if his father is only interested in Lucas's magic, but wonders why Lucas won't admit he can use magic now. Lucas sits on the couch, angry. His father tells him he won't recognize him just because he got married, but he can't be his heir until his magic returns. Lucas tells his father he didn't get married to get his approval. Stella looks at them and says that Lucas is now able to regain his magic. His father, hearing this, gets annoyed and asks Stella if this is true and asks how he managed to get it back. Stella grabs Lucas's hand and says that he is able to regain his energy when he touches her. She tells him to watch his body glow, but his father says he can't see anything. She thinks she is the only one who can see Lucas's body glow. His father turns his back on them and tells them that the two of them seem to get along well, but don't think that Stella can become a countess just because she married Lucas, and if Stella was smart, she would have left him. As Stella holds Lucas's hand and tells him that she should have shown her father that he could use his magic now, but Lucas didn't want to tell her yet. 
His mother looks at Stella and says she's sorry her husband is cranky. His mother asks if they have plans for today, but they reply that they have no plans. Lucas's mother was very happy and says that in this case, if he has come to them, she asks why he doesn't stay with his parents for a while. Stella was looking around the mansion and thinking that it had been a few days since she started staying with Lucas's parents. His mother was nice and very well behaved with Stella, and Lucas seemed happy to spend time with his mother after all this time. But his father refused to even have dinner with them. She was teary-eyed and thought that his father was crueler than she expected. It hurt to be criticized for something she couldn't control. She understood for being blamed for not being able to have a child. She wanted to help Lucas get more of his magic back. While snooping around the mansion, Stella has opened a door and sees a girl who thinks she is asleep. At that time, a servant appears and asks her how she is doing. She apologizes for entering the wrong room, and the servant tells her that her room is on the floor above them. Stella looks at him and asks him who the woman sleeping there is, and he tells her it's Miss Tracy. She was actually Lucas's fiance. She was suffering from a sleeping sickness that made her sleep for the last five years. She keeps looking at the servant and thinking that sleeping sicknesses are extremely rare diseases. No one knows what causes them, and she has heard that no one has found a cure for them. The servant tells her that once Miss Tracy got sick, their marriage plans were ruined. Lucas and Miss Tracy have spent a lot of time together in that concat since they were little. They were extremely close and cared a lot about each other, and there is a chance that Lord Lucas could treat Miss Tracy if he regained his magic. The servant bows to Stella, and he tells her that he will leave him once his contract expires. Stella smiles and asks him if he is worried that she will fall in love with Lucas and complain that she doesn't want to leave him. She tells him that this kind of thing won't happen. Stella had already gone to bed and was thinking about Lucas's fiancé. This, to her, meant that Lucas would want to marry Miss Tracy if he woke up. Stella was feeling a bit frustrated and almost like she was jealous. She finds a drink on the nightstand and decides to serve it at that time she thinks she is Lucas's wife for only a short time. Lucas gets to Stella's door and thinks she's probably asleep, but he opens the door and sees she's had some of that drink and quite a lot of it, but she apologizes and says she thought it was soda. Lucas tells her she already looks drunk so she should get some sleep. He wants to leave, but she won't let him to regenerate his magic. Stella holds his sleeve and tells Lucas to go get his magic back and prove his father wrong. He decides to regenerate the magic just a little, but she actually kisses Lucas. He is very stunned. As they kiss, Lucas thinks the alcohol must be making her more assertive. He's about to lose control of himself. He puts Stella on the bed and thinks he's gone too far, and Stella tells him she didn't know he had a fiancé, and he asks who told her that. But he tells her that Tracy is his adopted sister. She was the daughter of a Viscount who was close to Lucas's father. But Tracy lost her parents in an unfortunate accident, so his father adopted her. Lucas looks at her and says that at one point they were talking about his marriage to Tracy, but that's all in the past. But still, Tracy is someone important to Lucas, so he wants to heal her. But she didn't think she was someone important to him. He stands over Stella and asks her why she looks so sad. She gets frustrated but doesn't know what's bothering her. Lucas thinks she's jealous of Tracy and tells Stella she's pretty, but she says she's not pretty. They start kissing again. Lucas thought, if she wasn't really nice, he wouldn't feel this way. When he kisses her, he feels the magic come out of his stomach at the same time his desire for her increases. He didn't know if he was doing this to get his magic back or because he simply wants to kiss her. He looks at her in love and wonders if he'll be able to touch her more if he says he's doing it to recapture his magic. She says she wants to be free but feels too comfortable around Lucas. She wonders why she feels that way. In the morning, they wake up the two of them still on their beds and say good morning to each other. Stella is sorry she drank so much and asks Lucas to forget it ever happened. As they eat, Stella thinks she has gone too far, even though she was drunk and thinks Lucas has probably secretly had enough of her by now. Lucas touches her on the cheek and tells her he has something there. Lucas tells her he is looking for a new place to live. He has asked his mother to send a letter to his aunt to see if any of her mansions are vacant. At one point, his mother comes to the table and says her sister has mansions nearby, so she's sure she has some she can borrow for free. She should respond soon, for Stella was pleasant news. 
While Stella was talking to Lucas's mother, she was thinking that she had to act like Lucas's wife there and that they would have to sleep in the same room and that she hoped they would find a new home soon. Lee combs her hair. She analyzes why she cares about sharing a room and it's almost like she really likes Lucas. Stella tells Lee it's hot outside and asks her to tie up her hair, but Lee didn't think she should put it up today because she had something on her neck. Lucas left kiss marks on her neck yesterday. She felt like she was starting to get the wrong idea when he kissed her so lightly, like he loved Stella. Lee tells her that Lucas really loves her because he always follows her with his eyes. However, Stella was someone important to Lucas. What they did last night was just to restore Lucas's magic. They signed a contract to leave each other in a year there was no way Lucas would ever fall in love with her. Lucas was sitting in the library reading, and he couldn't get the image of Stella from last night out of his head. Back then, he wanted to make love to her. He thinks he shouldn't have these feelings for her when they divorce in a year. But if his magic gets stronger the closer he gets to her, something will happen that shouldn't. His mother asks him if he was thinking about Stella as she sees it written all over his face. His mother tells him that he looks quiet when he is with Stella and that she was surprised he got married without talking to them first. But she is happy for Lucas that he managed to find a good wife. His mother pats him on the head and tells him that she is sure his magic will return one day. Then he can take over the family title and he must be careful how he treats Stella. Finally, he got the answer in a letter from his aunt. Lucas and Stella and his mother were sitting at the table, talking about whether he would be waiting for them at the Marquis Branch's masked ball. And that was all that was written in the letter. His mother, while enjoying coffee, says that her sister is extremely social and can't stand to spend too much time in her own home. So she thinks she suggested they meet there. Lucas and Stella went to Marquis Branch's masquerade ball. The party was already very lively, However, they expected nothing less from a masquerade ball hosted by Marquis Branch. Lucas says that some men use their hidden identities to try and seduce women, so Lucas tells her that she had better not leave his side. He grabs her and tells her to be sure. He will call her Lily while they are there. That was the name of a cat Lucas had. Stella sees a girl in a very pretty dress, and Lucas says it seems some women try to seduce men too. Lucas also looks at that girl. Stella thinking he must really be impotent, his aunt didn't seem to be there. Stella accidentally bumps into a man with blonde hair, and he apologizes. But that voice and her atmosphere reminds him of Ethan, and he also thought she was Stella. Her hair was different, and he tells her to take off her mask. Lucas accosts Stella by asking the boy what business he has with his wife. He says his wife is delicate, so he asks them to treat her as such. The boy apologizes and thinks if she is so precious to him, he should keep her in a cage instead of bringing her to places like these. Ethan thinks he thinks he was wrong. Stella's hair isn't even that color. A woman seemed to be on guard when she saw Ethan and that woman called out to Ricardo to do her a favor. Lucas tells Stella that she is fine now, but he holds her hand and asks her what is wrong. Stella thought about the servant's words that Ethan was tall and muscular and thought he had gray or silver hair. Lucas asks her if this boy is her fiancé, but she didn't think he was the kind of guy to come to masked balls. She is thinking if Ethan is there, it might be her mother-in-law there. Lucas tells her to hurry and talk to his aunt so she can leave. He tells her that her fiancé may be looking for people who have seen her and asks if she wants to go back to the carriage. Lucas looks at her, and Stella tells her to leave so soon it might make her look even more suspicious. It has been a long time since Lucas has seen his aunt. She is surprised when she sees Lucas and was very happy to see him, and that she heard he had returned home. His aunt asks if he is looking for a house to live in with Stella to be safe. Stella was delighted to meet him. Lucas's aunt looks closely at Stella and tells Lucas that she is fine and will lend him one of her mansions and asks him where he wants to live. For Lucas in the country would be better, the aunt is shocked to hear that they want to live in the country and that they are newlyweds, but they would both prefer to live in the country. His aunt tells him that the country might be easier if he can't use magic. Eventually, his aunt asks if he wants to live in Mulvite and that it's run by a baron. Stella was sitting and thinking that Mulvite is close to her family home, and she asks her aunt if she has anything more secluded, but she tells her about Nonarine. They seem excited about this location. Her aunt tells them she will clean the manor and contact them in a few days. 
She wants them to enjoy the ball and tells them they will talk later. At one point, the light suddenly went out. It was so dark they couldn't see anything, and Lucas was calling Stella's name Lily and asking her if she was okay, but she didn't answer. She was pushed away and got caught in the crowd. Suddenly, someone comes up behind her and covers her mouth so she doesn't make a ruckus, but she stomps on his foot and runs away. The person who planned this must probably be whoever wanted to capture Stella and see who she really is, because they've been careful around Ethan. Once they turn on the lights, they won't be able to do anything so bold as kidnap Stella. Outside, it was night, and Stella was leaning against a wall thinking that she didn't think they would follow her there, and she could wait here for a while. In a moment, she heard someone ask her if everything was all right. She thought it might be Fred. The lights came on, but Lucas noticed that Stella wasn't there. The ball organizer apologized and said that it seemed that the lights went out because a drunken guest bumped into the magic stone that controls the lamps. Lucas looks around and says he didn't expect Marcus Branch to invent something so beautiful he expected less from Branch and their lightning magic. People admired the magic lamps and wanted to take them home. He was wondering where Stella went. At one point, a woman calls out to him and tells him that he thought he looked good when he saw her from across the room. But now he can see how handsome Lucas is up close. She tells him that his voice and the shape of his mouth are exactly her type. He tells her he is looking for someone and asks her to move, but the girl tells him no way now. As soon as she catches him in her arms, she tells him to go somewhere they can be alone and that he shouldn't hold back. Lucas pushes that girl and tells her he's not interested at all, so he asks her to try someone else with these proposals. But the girl tells him how impotent he can be not to be interested in her. But he ignored her. He was thinking, where is Stella thinking her ex-fiancé did something to her? He was sitting in thought as he saw Stella talking to a boy and thought that he had never seen Stella so quiet. And if she even knew the man she was talking to, he finally found her and told her to go home. At which point the blonde-haired boy kissed her hand and told her that he enjoyed their brief conversation and hoped they could meet again someday. Lucas and Stella were in the carriage. She thought she was glad they got what they came here to do, but Lucas was sitting there angry and says his contract wife is too careless and kisses her hand. He asks her if she's forgotten what she told him about men hiding their identity to use women. She hasn't forgotten. And at that point, Lucas kisses Stella and she's wondering if Lucas is angry and wondering if the infidelity is a breach of their contract, thinking what's gotten into Lucas. Stella looked embarrassed after they kissed, and Lucas asks Lucas if the infidelity isn't an incarnation of their contract, but she says she's never been unfaithful. But Lucas tells her that she seemed very close to the man and that it was almost as if today wasn't the first time they had met. She seemed shocked and thought Lucas was talking about Fred, but he is her childhood friend. He and her ex-fiancé live close to her parents, and Fred used to comfort her. She tells Lucas that she didn't want to recognize his voice, so she barely spoke to him. She just listened to him talk, so it wasn't infidelity. Lucas looks at her and touches her, and asks her if she likes that boy, and asks her if she left home but was engaged to him. She remembers how she told her parents she would rather marry Fred. The two of them started kissing again. There was no point if he kept kissing her like that, and he wondered what was going on down there. He kissed Stella to strengthen his magic, but she got angry. Lucas was sitting contained with her, and she tells him to stop, but he tells her she was much bolder last night. She told him to forget about it, but he for her had a good memory. She couldn't stop her body from warming up. She never felt that way when she was with Ethan because she hated Ethan's touch so much and suffered through everything he did to her. Lucas grabs her and apologizes for going so far. He says he is very stupid for not being able to control himself. The woman who wanted to capture Stella hits the boy who was hired to do it and tells him that it was useless and that he couldn't even steal one girl. She realized that there was a possibility that the girl had changed her appearance. She was thinking of a way to catch her. A servant goes to the woman and asks her what business she has with him, but she tells him she has a favor to ask. She wanted his dogs to find the owner of an object and bring it back. She looks at him and tells him that she took that handkerchief from the girls' room when she visited the Norris family to exchange information about the search for Stella. It hasn't been washed yet, so it should still have her scent. 
The servant sits in his chair and tells him that it is true that his dogs have superior noses, but they are not made to search for people. In fact, they have a violent temper and could not guarantee that the owner of the scent would return unharmed.